so we're back now with the rest of the Meet Your Match series, and yes, I'm still talking about Meet Your Match. What an absolute ride this has been, Valve. You've really given us something to talk about here, but I must preface these videos with a little bit of a disclaimer. From here on out, this will be mostly my personal opinion. I'm in no way suggesting that my proposed suggestions are the correct ways to go about the current issues, and by the way, the fact that there are current issues is not my opinion. That fact is a fact, but as far as the solutions go, this is all just me spitballing and using my own experience of being a part of the TF2 community for almost five years now as a reference point for what should be done about the problems that Meet Your Match has brought to the spotlight. Alright, now, I don't think that Valve is a good developer for TF2 anymore. I give them full credit for creating the game Team Fortress 2, one of my favorite games of all time, making Steam a huge platform for PC gaming in general, and the other games I really like that Valve made were Portal and Portal 2, but I have no allegiance to Valve. I don't care about the company Valve, I care about TF2. In fact, I actually don't agree with most of the practices that Valve has had in place as far as how they run their company. First off, if you didn't already know, Valve runs their offices very differently than how other games developers do. There are no bosses, no chain of command for projects. Everyone at Valve selects what project they want to do, and they work on it when they want to work on it. This ensures that the work that is done on each project is not done because the developer has to, it's because they are passionate enough to do it, because they like the project. This keeps a lot of the developers pretty happy because they get to go to work and look forward to what they get to do during the day. Now think about if every company was run like that, like if McDonald's was run like that. I think everyone would choose to work at the drive through window because it's not as dirty and greasy as working the fryer or mopping the floor. However, those dirty jobs that no one wants to do still need to get done and everyone knows it. So a few of the more team player types take those jobs on because they know that if no one chooses to mop the floor, the floor will eventually become dirty and greasy and someone will slip and fall and it will be a big problem in the future. Now I'm sorry to say this, but TF2 in the eyes of Valve's development team is the dirty floor that needs to be mopped. No one really wants to do it, but the few who are working on it are only working on it for the greater good of the company. Because they know that if everyone at Valve ignored TF2, the game would eventually die and they'll lose one of their biggest IPs and one of their more consistent sources of daily income, negatively affecting the company in the long run. So I truly believe that the current TF2 dev team is not working on the game because they love TF2 more than any other project that they instantly have available to them. They're working on it because they have to. Sure, no one is telling them to, but the Valve team is a family and they know that that someone needs to do it. So in a way, the whole only passion-driven dev team theory is broken already because these people aren't passionate about TF2. They're passionate about not letting TF2 die because it makes Valve a ton of money. This is the harsh reality of it, and I mean, it's just the way it is. But before you go get mad at the individual people who work on TF2 out of the goodness of their hearts, take into consideration what they're sacrificing by taking the metaphorical bullet for the rest of the Valve developers. Because right now, Valve is working the hardest on their newest, shiniest things. As of the moment that this video is being made, the coolest, newest, shiniest thing on Valve's plate is Dota 2 and the virtual reality gaming console, the Vive. Yeah virtual reality. It's kind of a big deal. So naturally, in a company where anyone can choose what project they get to work on, everyone is constantly flocking towards the things that are making the biggest splashes. So think about it from this perspective. If you're a video game developer and you work at Valve, Gaben comes up to you and says, my son, you can choose from any of the currently available projects and dedicate as much time to them as you'd like, and just as long as you're here and working on them, you will get paid. So being the excited and passionate game developer that you are, are you going to choose to work on Team Fortress 2? A a nearly 10 year old PC game that has been worked on by various random developers over the course of a decade with a thousand different cosmetic items over 100 unlockable weapons that all need to be perfectly balanced around nine classes that are constantly ebbing and flowing in and out of which one is currently too good or too weak and all of this is piled on top of an unorganized mess of code that is the result of maybe 100 plus developers all throwing their own method of working into one game that still runs on the original source engine or are you gonna just choose to work on the cutting edge video game technology a virtual freaking reality game console with pretty much everyone else in the company. The decision is pretty simple, and most Valve employees have chosen correctly. I mean, 20 years from now, would you like to say that you were involved with the development of one of the most groundbreaking pieces of equipment in the history of gaming technology? Or would you like to look back on this time and say you were trying to figure out how to make the matchmaking system work in Team Fortress 2, the game that was included in the orange box in 2007? So really, I can't blame the TF2 dev team for not being super into the game right now. I can only imagine what it must be like trying to sift through all the piles of unorganized jumbled code that they had nothing to do 
too, with while in the next office over they see their colleagues testing the vibes, swinging their arms all around, fighting off virtual reality monsters, having the time of their lives. TF2 is old news, and at a company like Valve, old news gets the minimum amount of passion and interest invested in it, and that's just how it works. I don't really agree with that method, but then again, I can't be sure if Team Fortress 2 would be the game it turned out to be without that system. All I know is that the way Valve runs makes it possible for passion to be at its highest, but only for the projects that are popular within the company, and usually that means whatever is the newest one. So that's the situation I believe is happening over at Valve headquarters. I might be wrong, no one really knows what happens over there because the second issue that has been persistent, even outside of TF2, is the undisputable lack of communication between the developers and the consumers. There's a clip out there somewhere of Valve's Robin Walker that has been shown many times recently where he explains the reasoning behind keeping silent about their development process. It's pretty long and you can look up the full thing if you're interested, but basically what he said was that they refrain from revealing too much information about the project that they have in the works because it prevents them from changing their minds about it later on. I agree that being able to change your mind about something you're working on is important for developing, and revealing what you're working on, having the community excited about that feature, and then excluding that feature from the final release is obviously not what you want to get yourself into. However, I think that Valve is foolish in thinking that cutting us off from the communication entirely is somehow going to make us less upset than if they were to sometimes reveal features that they're working on and then exclude them from the final release because it just didn't work out. I honestly believe that Valve would make considerably less people upset with updating the community on in-progress projects and features, even if those features have no guarantee that they will make it into the final product, than if they simply don't communicate at all. And they don't. The standard for modern game development has been set. The internet is the greatest tool for global communication ever conceived by the human race, so naturally companies are using it to create a stronger bond with their products consumers. If you opt out of that ability, you're being weird. You're passing up the opportunity to be completely aware of exactly what your customers want, making it ten times easier for not only the community to be happy, but for you to get it right on the first attempt. The fact of the matter is that in modern gaming development, if you refuse to communicate, you're just not doing it right. You will lose customers simply because you're not communicating. It's been happening to Niantic, the developers who were overwhelmed with the success of Pokemon Go. For a very long while there, they refused to communicate with their customers, and it caused a huge outcry from the Pokemon Go community because they didn't know what was happening. Will this bug be fixed? Is it even a bug? What is going on? I'm frustrated with why this stuff isn't, at the very least, being acknowledged by the person sitting at a computer working on this thing, and now I'm uninstalling because it's not worth my time waiting around for something that I don't even know is coming or not. And that's what a lot of TF2 players think every single day. Day. And while I don't think that a lack of communication alone will outright kill TF2, I do think that the lack of communication will cause the game to become more and more lackluster over time, which will make that future much more of a possible reality. Which brings me to my last complaint I have, which is made a little bit more clear by the previous claim that the current dev team doesn't care much for TF2, is this. I don't think anyone at Valve even plays TF2. Now, I'm sure that they have it installed on their PCs, and I'm sure the developers at least boot the game up to test in-game what something they're working on looks like. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying that the development team doesn't play TF2 from a I'm, I'm just playing the game standpoint. They don't join a casual match just to try and see how much people they can take out with a market garden. They don't lobby up with the other developers to try and rank up in matchmaking, and they certainly don't play man versus machine in their free time. Every time that they play TF2, it's to test if the game is working. And as a result, they don't focus on if the experience of the game is actually fun, balanced, fair, etc. So how would we expect them to be down with handling the intricacies of how TF2 works as a video game without communicating with us? I uh, actually looked at the Steam profiles of the two admins of the competitive beta test Steam group who had their profiles public, and one of them, Eric S., uh, has a whopping 462 hours in TF2, with five hours played in the last two weeks, and Jill, who is hands down the most active TF2 developer, being pretty much the only one who has ever said anything to the community, whether it be damage control blog posts or that an upcoming update is neato, has an impressive 4,027 hours in TF2, so that's nice. Oh wait, he's only played for one hour in the last two weeks, and he hasn't even booted up the game in six days. Neato, still whip it like diva. Apparently, according to rumors, it's not completely sh like confirmed or anything, there are around five other developers working on TF2, and I don't know their hours in the game. But if Eric S. has ten times less hours than I do in this game, I guess it kind of makes sense that he'd be a part of the team that buffed the Phlogistonator, nerfed the Extinguisher, gave the shortstop a shoving mechanic, added a 10% damage buff to the Widowmaker for no reason, and thought that being able to hit the same person multiple times with the Righteous Bison was a bug. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> now, some of you might be thinking what I'm thinking. I'm sure Valve has a special client that they play TF2 on in order to better test the game, and that client doesn't show up on Steam as a recently played game, but I highly doubt that they play on casual servers with their bug testing client with the intent of seeing if the game is fair and balanced, because testing for bugs and testing for fun are completely different, and while a lot of bugs get eradicated all the time, the changes to the weapons and game mechanics that are implemented give me the impression that these dudes are just guessing at this point. They don't play TF2. How are they supposed to know what weapons should be changed in the next patch. I guess they could put up a straw poll asking if the Criticola is a straight upgrade in its current state because of the overwhelming imbalance of pros and cons, but nah, that's too hard and it takes an entire 30 seconds to do. Look, I just did it just now. So what have we learned? Valve, as a company, is run in a way that focuses too much of their developer's passion towards newer games and leaves TF2 in the dust because it's old and not the Vive. Valve doesn't communicate because they're afraid of making us upset with unkept promises, but as a result they make us even more upset because they don't communicate. The TF2 dev team doesn't play their own game because their job of eradicating bugs and randomly changing weapons with no actual reasoning behind it doesn't require that they do so. So those are basically all of my thoughts on what's wrong with the relationship between Valve, TF2, and the TF2 community. But I'm not content with just ending the video here and then coming to the conclusion that TF2 is totally dead because the developers have their own, mainly separate issues. I've got a couple of solutions and I'm not trying to say that these are the right solutions. I'm sure that they cause problems as well, but I do think that they are at least worth trying. So hear me out. I think Valve should hand over the development rights to a a third party company. They've already done something similar with CSGO. The game is owned by Valve, but it's largely worked on by another game developer called Hidden Path Entertainment, which I honestly believe is why the game is so successful, because Valve doesn't have to dedicate as much time and resources to that game. In fact, I think if Valve had been the sole developer of CSGO, they'd be getting the same treatment TF2 gets and would have probably never been such a popular esport. In fact, if you think about it, the answer to the classic angry question of if CSGO can have a working matchmaking system, then why can't TF2? Well, that's because Valve didn't actually make the matchmaking system for CSGO. Hidden Path did. Overall, I don't think any amount of complaining about Valve's lack of communication or their lack of an understanding of what TF2 actually needs to be a better game will make them change their ways. Their number one priority is keeping their dev team happy, and what keeps them happy is their freedom to work on whatever they want to work on. Giving TF2's update and development rights to a third-party company would be a good idea because it would allow Valve to go about their business of not communicating with us, not playing their own games, and not giving two hecks about how fun TF2 is is just as long as it's still making them money. They can still do all of that on the back end while another group of people in a different building somewhere do all of the actual development and give the customers what they actually want from a game studio. This way Valve has their way and can neglect old projects that no one has any interest anymore while still making a boatload of cash and the community has their way and can still actively communicate with a dev team that is open to the idea of a two-way street between developers and players. But who, Dane, you're asking me, who would you have developed TF2? Well, my first thought is Hidden Path Entertainment, of course, simply because they seem to have done a wonderful job with CSGO. Both games run on the original Source engine, so the coding would be familiar enough ground for current employees, and their offices are apparently right around the corner, so there's that. Also, they're the ones who originally made the matchmaking system for CSGO, so I'd trust them completely with that project. Another option I can think of would be Bad Robot, the company who worked on Pastime, and even though the game mode is pretty subjective and weird, they at least did a great job with keeping up on the updates, and in the patch notes, their clear communication was hilariously contrasted alongside Valve's. Bad Robot is actually a film production studio owned by J.J. Abrams, and Pastime is literally the only video game related thing that they've worked on so far, which is actually kind of weird. But what that might suggest is that there's at least a few people on Bad Robot's production team who actually like Team Fortress 2 enough to want to stop making movies for a year and develop an entire alternative game mode for a 2007 PC game. It's not like Pastime was a cross-promotional thing for Star Wars or something like that, so whoever is making TF2 content out of nowhere at Bad Robot, I'd honestly like to see that amount of dedication in the core development of this game. Game. So those are the only two companies that I think are a likely handoff for TF2's development, but another option I think should be considered is something that Valve has been doing for the most part for a couple years now, and that's handing the development process completely over to the TF2 community. Valve already has sort of done this with Dota 2. The lead developer of that game is a guy who goes by Icefrog, who was the original creator of the World of Warcraft mod called Defense of the Ancients. This situation is actually very similar to TF2's history. The original Team Fortress was a modded version of Quake 
created by Robin Walker and John Cook. The only difference between the current Dota 2 situation and TF2 is that Robin and John don't even work on TF2 anymore, while Ice Frog still works on Dota. So right now I feel like there's this lack of community in TF2's development that can easily be resolved by Valve allowing the community to create updates for the game, and that's actually been happening a lot lately. Robotic Boogaloo, the end of the line update, and the invasion update were all entirely created by the community, not to mention almost every single cosmetic map and taunt that has been added to the game in the last few years has been a workshop submission made by someone other than Valve. So I say why not go all the way and just hire some of these people to actually work for Valve full time to develop the game. These creators already spend so much of their time working on content for TF2 without any guarantee that their projects will even be added to the game, and they still put in their best efforts, all without pay or incentives other than they just like doing it. That kind of thing is what's missing from TF2, and it's right there in front of us. Right now, there are three entire updates just waiting for Valve, completely ready to be added to the game. Iron Gauntlet, an entire MVM update. The Mayan Project, a thematic update with a ton of awesome cosmetic items. And then there's Frontline, a content pack that adds thousands of new resources to the game, allowing for an amazingly diverse content-driven update. And all of these things were made by random people who just love TF2 enough to dedicate hours and hours of their free time into making this stuff for no guaranteed pay. Imagine if these creators were officially hired by Valve to work on the core game. If there's anyone who understands what TF2 needs, dev communication, a decent matchmaking system, fun, fair mechanics and weapon balances, it's the community. So who else would be better fit than the community itself? Again, these are all just ideas and suggestions that are aimed at Valve with no expectation that they'll even be listened to or considered. It's just what I think would be best for TF2 in its current state, because as it stands, I don't think Valve is a great fit for TF2 anymore. They did their part, they created the greatest video game of all time, and their most passionate developers worked their hardest on it back when it was the new, shiny project to work on. But now, it's not, and because Valve works the way that they work, I don't think we'll see the same level of commitment and passion put into TF2 again unless something changes. Something like giving the TF2 project to someone else. I don't know if it should be the community or a completely different game studio, all I know is that it probably shouldn't be Valve. I love Team Fortress 2, and I will play the game as long as it's just as fun as it is to me right now, and it still runs on my computer, but I do worry about the longevity of the game if the amount of effort that's being put into its development continues as it's been. As far as Valve goes, I seriously doubt that they'll have the ability to change their ways. Now, I think it should be pretty obvious that Valve's sloppy handling of TF2 isn't nearly enough to get me to stop playing. Like I said in the beginning, my allegiance isn't to Valve, it's to their game Team Fortress 2. I like the game a lot, and I enjoy playing it, so I play it, but because I'm ingrained in the culture surrounding TF2, I'm also interested in what's next. And what's next could either be great, or it could be not so great. And I'm of the opinion that if Valve doesn't change something about the way TF2 is being handled, we could be headed in the not so great direction. If there's anything that I could praise about Valve, it's that they won't just let a good thing die. And a good thing to them, is money. TF2 makes them money, so they won't let it die. They just need to realize that the less effort that they put in, the less money will come out. Maybe once they start to see that, they'll consider more realistic measures other than just putting in the minimal effort and watching the bank account grow. And I think those measures involve cutting Valve's dev team out as much as possible and giving the game to someone who actually cares about something other than maintaining a pulse. We don't want to just maintain a pulse here, Valve. We believe that TF2 can get out of bed and start sprinting, so to speak. So it just comes down to the one decision in order to make that happen, and I hope that something happens. In the meantime, I'll still be here, building dispensers, so thanks for watching, and I will talk to you nieces and nephews next time. Bye bye